Hello and welcome to 150 Days of Psalms. My name is Derek Hove and I'm the pastor at Salem Lutheran Church in Orlando. Every day for 150 days I'm reading and reflecting on one of the Psalms and uh, saying a quick prayer. Uh, most of those reflections have come uh, through my past experiences as I have found the Psalms speaking into them. My hope being that these Psalms will uh, speak into your journey as well. Today is day 141, and so we read Psalm 141. O Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers, nor eat of their sweet foods. Let the righteous strike me, their rebukes as oil upon the head are not to be refused. Yet my prayers are continually against the deeds of the wicked. Let their rulers be thrown down upon the stones that they may hear my words, for they are sweet. Just as the one who tills the earth breaks the rocks so that their bones be scattered at the mouth of the grave. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Guard me from the trap they have laid for me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while alone I pass through. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a, a feeling of dread that can settle on you when you have said something or done something that you know is wrong and that has done some hurt or harm to someone, especially somebody you love, and uh, more so even when the conversation is to be had about that thing you have done and you find yourself sitting across a table or in a chair next to somebody who is sharing the pain that has come uh, because of your words or actions. There's that just dreaded heaviness that you carry with you into that space. I have had plenty of those conversations in my life, uh, especially uh, as a person in ministry, because ministry is people work, and when you do people work, you are bound, uh, intentionally or not, uh, to hurt people along the way. And uh, I would say blessed when uh, those dreaded conversations come along that can lead towards reconciliation and forgiveness. I think of uh, a day when someone misunderstood some words that I had written in a note and uh, took them as an attack, as a, uh, which was not what I meant, but there was something else there. And because of that hurt uh, came and we had uh, one of those sort of dread conversations. But we were able to work through and say, this is what you said and this was hurtful to me. And I could say, well, that is not what I meant to say. What I meant to say was this. And we were able to get to a reconciliation place at the end and uh, to be able to move on uh, to a new place. Uh, another time I, I spoke words of generalization, uh, words, uh, you know, when we say, well, everybody understands this or it's always this way. Uh, and those generalizations often aren't actually uh, the way everything always works. And uh, these particular generalizations touched a place of deep hurt for another person. And uh, that was clear, and that then led to that sort of place of dread and to an opportunity to apologize and to enter into some conversation that moved to, again, that sort of place of reconciliation where we get our feet back under us in our relationship and uh, move on together with uh, grace and, and love for one another. Psalm 141, I think the psalmist knows that place of dread. Uh, it starts in this place of prayer. Uh, but then uh, in verse 3, uh, says to God, set a watch before my mouth and guard the door of my lips. So the psalmist knows that some things have been said that they have said uh, that shouldn't have been. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing, right? So now it's a request from God to maybe keep the psalmist from doing some evil things that have been done before. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers, nor eat of their sweet foods. Like there's a knowing here that those foods are sweet. But then it's the next verse that tells you that this is kind of that dread thing. So already God has been asked to keep me quiet and to keep me from doing bad things. But verse 5 says, let the righteous strike me. Their rebukes as oil upon my head are not to be refused. So there's a sense that there has been some wrong that has been spoken or has been done. 
and that the dread conversation is actually a good conversation that should not be refused because it leads to some new spaces. And it's at that point that the prayer prayers continue, right? Yet my prayers are continually against the deeds of the wicked. So uh, the psalmist is saying, yes, I deserve this rebuke, but I am also constantly praying uh, against that sort of wickedness, which could very well be a prayer that the psalmist's own behavior gets better. And then as it goes along, it, it uh, comes finally to a place, but my eyes are turned to you, O Lord, in you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Guard me from the trap they have laid for me. Sometimes we lay those traps for ourselves and we stumble into those places of dread conversation simply because of the things we have said or done that we ought not have. Uh, verse 10 says, let the wicked fall into their own nets while I alone pass through. And for me, there's some tension in that verse that the psalmist has recognized their complicity with wickedness. They've had those dread conversations with people who have rebuked them and called them to account. And so they pray that God not let them fall into that trap again and uh, that uh, the psalmist will do better, but hoping that in doing better, when sometimes failure happens, that God will yet pass them through the nets, maybe which they have created, and uh, take them to a new space of uh, new life and reconciliation along the way. And I think that's a great hope for all of our dread conversations, that we can begin with prayer in the way this psalm does, recognize that we do and say things sometimes that we ought not, uh, welcome those dread conversations when they come, and then return to a place of prayer and trust in God that uh, invites God to drag us into uh, uh, better places than we have gotten on our own. Let us pray. You created us, O oh God, with consciences that gauge our words and deeds. They give us feelings we do not like and invite us to remedies we would rather avoid. Rather than try to blunt or avoid these feelings, Lord, help us to embrace them as opportunities for reconciliation. Give us the courage to enter into difficult conversations, whether we need to apologize or speak truth and love to those who have caused harm. As we do this difficult work, help us to be humble in these tender places of being human. Amen. Thank you for joining me for 150 days of Psalms. We'll return tomorrow with Psalm number 142.